Welcome back to Ultra Review, episode number 23. We're here reviewing episode 16 and 19 of Ultra 7. By the way, with these episodes, I have 11 left before my break and 30 overall left to go for the entire series. Yes, 30 left. I like the fact, basically, I'm almost ready to take my break at this one. So the four episodes we're discussing here is, first, The Eye That Shines in the Darkness. This episode feels like something similar we see from Ultraman, where there is this object that basically just... Cra- well, it, it, it's explained that this satellite known as Sakura 7, Sakura, Scott, Sakura 9, is returning back to Earth and... No one recalled it. It was part of a, a project that was suspended and to explore this alien planet. So, then we see this rock and this kid for this rock thing. I'm like, yeah, we're doing kid plot again. But it's fine. It's... He's not annoying per se. The other kids might be a little annoying, but... So, the kid picks up this rock. A very shiny rock. He just doesn't want to give the kids... And there's this eye everywhere, and it's like, oh, give me back my body, and then he just tosses out, and he just convinces it to fall, and everybody just chases after this kid for this rock, and it turns out the rock is part of it's part of this in this creature's body. His name is Agnon, yes, who looks like a giant lizard, and causes some damage, and Ultra Seven fights it, and he's told, like, he's asked, like, why are you why are you here? Because you're trying to take my plane. It's like, no, we're not. It's like, you lie. You lie. And Ultra 7 basically thinks he's briefly fighting him and can tell him, yeah, he's not lying. We're not attacking you. And he's like, okay. And he leaves. What was the point of this episode? Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm like, this is like very similar to... An episode we just discussed with the Operation Rocket, where that that, that two-parter they had just discussed last episode. I'm like, didn't we just have the same problem? Except this is solving a standalone episode of a two-parter. Yeah, yeah, and that was quite interesting. Next up is Underground. Go go go! Yeah, this actually reveals. This is something quite interesting. Oh, good. It released. Thank you. Um, so, oh, yeah. Basically, the episode name I'm, I'm looking for watching. I'm going to watch that uh, probably a little, little bit later. So, basically, we discover that there's this, this mind collapse. You're thinking, wait, a mind collapse? That is interesting because the last thing this franchise ever dealt with a mind that I could think of was back in episode one of Ultra Q. And that the monster that came out of that one was a old Godzilla suit. I I do like the fact going back to a mine, it's fine. At least they waited a while before going back to a mine. So there's this guy that looks like Dan, BM Miner, he's called the Miracle Man, I guess he survived a fall of two hundred meters. And Dan realizes, though, at the scene, it looks like, oh, crap. He knows who this miner is because it's actually explained in this episode how, how Dan got his human appearance. He modeled it after this one guy who he saved because he figured he's a brave guy. So, and also the guy throughout the episode, he's losing his eyesight because he's basically in darkness for a little while. And he had to go back. The reason why he's trapped there because he's trying to save his mouse. Who, by the end of the episode, is completely forgotten about. And what caused this earthquake? Some underground city no one knew anything about. And it's run by robots. Yeah, they discovered it. Well, let's go, let's go, let's go rescue it with, with this big, huge drill. Which, I don't know if things like this exist in real life. I'd be shocked if basically, and they have like a, like, they even have the whole thing, like an air shaft thing, which that's perfectly natural for, her, for a, uh, a mine collapse to put up an air shaft. So, it's blocked. So then, of course, they proceed to drill on you. Like, they go right away because they recognize who it is. So Dan and pretty much most everybody except for the captain proceed to go underground in the drill 
and they, they basically make you progress and then they come across a volcano area and like oh crap the 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 air shaft has collapsed so they had to proceed forward in 30 minutes otherwise like, he would die and then they proceed to hit a dead end they can't go any further they try at least with a laser so Dan decided to use explosives to blow a hole in the wall, and there's this mysterious underground city knowing anything about this at all. And then we see a robot, which is taken out by shooting its visor, and also captures Dan. Though Dan's able to, like Dan, basically was going to transform to Ultra Simple. Like, oh crap! It's taken, but but wait, it's not stolen by some other alien just in another place. It's over a nearby table. So basically, what he does. He uses his freed hand to touch his belt buckle to basically... So he programmed his belt buckle to be sort of a gravity device to bring his, his ultra... His ultra eye puts it on, becomes Ultra 7, like defeats the robot, and they of course spank muscle the place. And uh, first thing he does, as soon as he's free, he goes to find the miner. He goes straight to him, grabs him, doesn't grab the mouse for some reason. By, by the way, the mouse is never mentioned by the end of the episode. It just left there. Maybe he grabbed it. I'm not sure. It's never said if he did. Then, of course, basically, they blow up the city. They get out of there. Uh, he's still called Miracle Man. It's an interesting episode. I do like the fact they question, like, what, 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 why, what, why, why are these robots doing this? It's not really clear exactly the reason why. And the next episode is called Escape Dimension X, which in the sub they describe as a, a pseudo space, where... Because the military guided training exercises which involve skydiving. Everyone except for uh, Akashi and Soga get basically a theory. They get sent to this forest of fog, which after exploring for and look up in the sky like, oh crap. They're in sort of a... They're not on Earth, but they do see the Earth from, from, from a distance. It's described as suicide space but by a staff officer done by an alien from two years before the events of the series, which called... What is the name of this alien here? Hmm... It is known as Alien Bell, which is this creature in giant that's like, why the heck he does this? Don't know. And then they use Ultra Hawk, where all the team members go in. And of course, they rescue the two of them. Ultra 7 fights the creature. And then, of course, well, Dan proceeds to get back on board thanks to using the, the Hawk Beta. Get back on board. That's what we can see in Transform, which good on him for doing that because it's kind of awkward to go into the main cockpit in the Alpha. And transfer right behind him. Like, oh, there you are, Dan. Like, him doing the beta. That's actually a really smart move on his part. And, of course, the thing disappears. Never be seen ever again. Next episode is interesting. Where we have... There's a scientist part of this thing called Project Blue. Where they're creating this magnetic net over the planet and the moon. Where... No alien can pass through, but but it is question: Can humans leave the planet to go other places? Yes, yes, they can. Thanks in part to uh, the fact there are secret entrances in this thing. I'm like, okay, that's a brilliant idea to do that. Because if you're like, then why would you build something if you were taking planets so you can't have humans leave? Good question. But there's also this thing where. Like, there's a spacecraft that, that basically just goes through a hole in the net and crashes. And causes a humongous forest fire. And apparently the Ultra Guard knows nothing about this. And Fubushi is described as really bored. Because nothing has happened. So, eventually, of course, the scientist makes it goes on uh, his, he call, they call it his precious holiday. He goes see his beautiful wife. Who I can tell by look at her, she is American. Or could be basically someone who's English speaking, who looks who's basically white, and she's obviously dubbed over in Japanese. This is I think the first or second time I've seen this in 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 the case of Ultra in the case of Ultra Friend, I think she's the first character they did this with. Which fine. 
Yeah, I appreciate the fact the guy married a pretty woman. But the one thing I didn't like about the scene when they showed the bedroom, and this is a product of 60s television. Not the product in real life, because I highly doubt real life couples slept like this. Where this couple slept in two separate beds. Because apparently there was unofficial television where we can't show people sharing the same bed together. And I didn't know this for years until someone mentioned it in college. Where apparently the very first TV show to ever depict a couple sharing a bed together. And this might surprise you. The Flintstones. I'm like, what? The Flintstones? Yes, the Flintstones is the very first TV show to ever depict this. Because this one we have two beds with a night in the middle. You see, that's not what a real life couple's bedroom actually looks like. Heck, even current stuff, they don't do that anymore because I think they must have realized oh, that's a dumb idea to do that, to put like a like a table in the middle and have two separate beds. Why did they make it one bed? Yeah. Now, here's the thing, it's a product of its time, so I have no, from a mom perspective, it looks ridiculous to do this, but it's 60s television, so of course, basically, this even US was like this as well. So, Japanese basically was copying American television at the time. So, what do you expect? So, the aliens this episode is kind of interesting. They're called Alien Bodo, which I love the design of these damn things, but when I saw their head, I'm like, wait a minute. Does Star Trek rip up these the designs for, for the Ferengi? Because he's got guys like big heads, he's got like scales. I'm like, I love the design. It looks looks very well made. It looks definitely looks expensive. And their plan is to blow up the planet. Not conquer it. Blow it up. Because they believe they should be the only intelligent uh, species in the universe. I'm like, that is very arrogant of them. So they want to blow up the planet because they don't like the fact there's another intelligent species out there. And the guy who sort of leads them proclaims himself to be the emperor of the universe. <laughs> My gosh. This is the first alien I've seen in the Ultra franchise to proclaim himself to the emperor of the universe just because he thinks he should be the only intelligent species out there. Which I think is stupid. This is a brief haunted house moment here, which I thought was really cool. Like the the apparently like the scientist it was basically like he's like getting his morning coffee, all of a sudden his table rises up and there's stairs. Then he's captive and then he's taken to another room where this alien builds this to him. Or like, I want you to give me the plans for for, for your net. And he's like, Nope. Oh, and before this, there he does give us his wife, whose name is Grace. Which we hear him talk, and we, we, we listen to the episode. He does speak her name in English. Not Japanese. English. I found that to be interesting. It's pronounced a lot like in America when I say Grace. And she's given this beautiful dress. And they read the end of the episode, the dress actually the plan's not all along. I'm like... What a brilliant idea. And the only way to see the notes is use a special light that he invented in order to see it. I'm like, that's brilliant. By the way, Dan and um, Anne are the pet specialist's house because uh, Fubushi and I think Soga are off in space helping out with netting of, of basically this net thing. They're on the moon. Which... That could, it may, maybe the reason why they're not they're written off they're written off not here is maybe because the actors were busy that day or they probably was sick. That's my guess. But hopefully just one episode. So Yeah. And of course eventually we do have a, a kaiju battle in the episode, which is quite cool. Yep. This space crab is obviously a flying saucer because a lot of the alien species in this series just use flying sauces that have cool-looking spaceships. 
At least the Hawks look very original. I love the design of the Hawks. It's just that the alien spacecraft use a little bit more work. Like, if it's small craft, it's basically, like, these weird things. Like, their armada they had one episode where it just... Like, if you look up, they're basically the size of my hand. Like, they look like... It's like they, it's like they just rush job them. But, really cool episodes. I thought these were really, really cool. And... Well, can't wait to discuss the many episodes of the series. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, that's particularly it, particularly you. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications, and do another like button. Uh, didn't wrap very soon, so I'm just going to basically rest a bit. And when I come back, I'm going to work on our, la our, our last crusade or the rise of a new world. Okay, next video. Bye.